tiny action hero shit. Get it, got it, good. When it comes to live action TV series, none like The Boys has really kind of gripped what the reality of humans with superpowers would be like. We like to think it would be something like in the, the the most eclectic world like the, the dcs and the marvel where people would actually be nice but with everything that we make from weapons to whatever humans are capable of we'll take something good and absolutely make it bad so the boys takes that and if you've been on board for these many seasons that we've had so far you would have known that they take what look like with people with superpowers and how that is twisted to be become basically a conglomerate of power whoever holds the power of the superheroes holds the power of the world and can shape it like they like they want to he's lost his fucking mind Love, mommy, daddy, and, and so now we get gen v the next um, up and coming who might replace the top seven and they are trained and molded into those superheroes that they need to be and those students coming into classes are expecting maybe that they will really stand for justice in the American way, stand for good and hope. And every now and again, as we've seen with the seven, there is one or two good ones, except just being in and around these people that hold the power, that control war, end up pushing you to places that you don't necessarily want to go to. And that's what we have with Gen V. But does it stick the landing like it does with the boys? Let's talk about it. From the world of the boys comes Gen V, which explores the first generation of superheroes to know that their superpowers are from Compound V. These heroes put their physical and moral boundaries to the test, competing for the school's top ranking. So our main, main protagonist is played by Jay Sinclair. She plays uh, Marie Moreau. She's an 18 year old superhero with the ability to control and weaponize her own blood. As an incoming freshman at Vought run at the Goldolkan University, she is eager to prove she has what it takes to join the seven, but is sidetracked by a mystery that begins to unravel at the school. And that's really where we see the face of Gen V, the Goldolkin school, and what lies beneath the school, the, the kind of darker face. So everything front facing, everything that you can imagine that people that are going to school or a university, everything that they'll deal with, all the issues that they deal with just as humans without uh, abilities. Take that and then, then double it down, smoosh it in to have uh, interesting, even more worrying issues to deal with because when you have an issue that is suicidal or self-harming or you know darker thoughts and it, it take like some of the human's worst traits or sometimes things that happen to us in the worst ways but then you give abilities into that notion that's what this is again and we see that with the boys to bend the world to your will With Gen V, it's interesting to see how that translates into all those things when you're growing up in that age and then you're just coming, you know, past puberty, past uh, kind of thinking what you might become and be able, all hopeful. And then you're trying to fight for the, the pressure of being one of the best and where you're going to end up according to what ability you have. Even if you do have X-ray vision. Congratulations. And welcome to Godolkin University. And you got to fight and scrape every way. Pretend that you are one person on face value and then another uh, beneath that. And again, it manages to shine a light and poke at our reality by having a, a, a message, a story to tell. And that's why The Boys has always been one of those shows where people have felt prodded and poked and necessarily or unnecessarily get their backs up and go oh this show is terrible because of blah 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 for the wrong one but, but out, out of crisis of, comes uh, change crisis. out of crisis so, comes change and, uh, so last 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 year, last year, really slowing down, down and, and, and reconnecting with myself. myself and i am very excited for everyone to meet the real me that is generally an issue that you probably need to work on if it does poke and prod at places um, uh, Chris and I, well, Chris from Moves and Munches, love to talk about the reality or the messaging behind the boys. And again, we have that here. But that is not like you're being slapped in the face. You still absolutely have a really interesting story of how we might get a new group of superheroes that are actually good. 
fighting against the norm fighting against the status quo which is parents that have put v into your bloodstream without your consent and then vote trying to control you to make billions that's really what it is and at the extent of how far vote would go we know that incongruency or uh, together joined at the hip that seems to be goldolkin and the vote industries and seeing what they're able to do to shape and, and mold the new generation is where the story comes into play as to what they're getting up to and so we have this unlikely group of friends that cross together we don't really start getting into the nitty gritties of the story for the first few episodes because we are given time to get to know some of those characters like a jay sinclair or chance pedro who plays Andre Anderson. He's a junior at Goldogan University with magnetic powers. Uh, his best friend is Golden Boy, who, again, we spend some time on. He is the guy that is, is supposedly going straight to the seven because of his ability. He's been shaped and trained to be that number one character. Lizzie Broadway, who plays Emma Mayer, is also known by a superhero name as Little Cricket. I loved her story. I thought it was very dark and interesting as to the way they went with it. There are these little characters and nuances of characters that we meet with characteristics that they're given, but then it's the relationships that are formed in between that time that makes us care about it. So because they spend some time, you might feel like it's, it's all over the place a little bit because they give time to the characters they are still shaping that story but it's only later that we get more of what's to come and i think you're going to be impressed with this series and when it comes to the gore don't be surprised by the amount of gore they haven't shied away from kind of another thing that made the boys the boys lots of gore in very creative ways using the superpowers with the gore as like if you could imagine it they can probably do it and that's the sort of thing that we get to see in this series which i've loved i thought it was very interesting between the non-preaching preaching part between the story and the characters that you get to become invested in and then once again hate vort and everybody that kind of controls these people and just want them to be shined a light on but also have a sort of hopeless feeling for these characters because it seems like a lot of the time there's no way out so I think people are going to be impressed with this. I don't think it quite has the, the hard-hitting punch as the boys did. But I think that's maybe because we've had it, already had the boys. So we kind of know what to expect with this. But coming at it from this g different generation, I thought was an interesting way to go. Kind of filling that gap until we get the next season of the boys. So let me know what you think about this series once you've seen it. We're dropping the first three on Friday. And then subsequent episodes will be released on every Friday until we get that eight. Thanks so much for watching. Do hit that like and subscribe if you found this informative and enjoyed. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long Tuesday.